Welcome back to season two, episode two of Mindset Monday. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. This is George Kuros uh, with a Mindset Monday. And what I'm going to talk about today is this idea of starting slow but ending strong. And here's how I think about this. Uh, people who might not know this about me, but I've actually, uh, I'm a runner. I, I've enjoyed running for probably my entire adult life. Uh, there was times where running was really, really hard for me because I gained uh, a lot of weight. And it's, you know, the more weight you gain, the more weight you have to carry when you're running. But it always seems that I, I was actually pretty good at running. And, you know, the lighter I get, the, the quicker I, I get for these long distances. And I've actually had the opportunity to, I think, run three marathons, multiple half marathons. And one of the tips I give to people who are running marathons, uh, and I'm not like <laughs> this expert marathon runner, not breaking any records. Uh, but I, you know, I've done okay in them in the past. And one of my goals is to, maybe I should put this out there. I want to, I ran, uh, my first marathon when I was like 29, I ran my second one in, uh, when I was 30. So, uh, I actually want to run a marathon in every decade of my life. So I've gone like 16 years, uh, without running one, but it's still, if I do it in the next four years, I'll have made it, you know, doing one in my forties. So I'm throwing that out to the universe, uh, some accountability to myself. And I'm kind of starting to, to train toward that. But one of the things, piece of advice that I give to people when they're actually looking at running a marathon is to actually just kind of start slow. And when you're actually at a race and you're doing this, your adrenaline is pumping, you're excited, there, you know, just an excitement of people around you. And you kind of get caught up in the moment. And what happens a lot of times is that you expend this massive amount of energy at, at the beginning that later in the race, it becomes really, really tough. And I remember actually, um, you know, when I ran my races, I would purposely let people pass me. I would just kind of focus on my surroundings. What was, um, you know, what was happening in that space? And I would like intentionally kind of slow my pace and I would slow that pace and what I'd find is that I kind of would conserve my energy because when you think about teaching, when you think about life, it is a marathon. It does take a long time, you know, to kind of go through this. And sometimes we put all of our energy at the beginning that getting to the end is tough, right? I'm not saying getting to the end of life, that's a little bit more of it. But getting to the end of that race, you know, getting to the end of that school year, where all of our energy is expended. And kind of thinking about that, really what I noticed is when I was running, uh, a lot of people would actually do the exact opposite. They would just have that burst of energy. And later in that race, what I noticed is I would just start kind of focusing and I would look at people and I just start passing them. I start doing this. And it always felt great because I would really kind of focus on emptying the tank that by the end of that race, it wasn't me just kind of, you know, getting over the finish line barely, but I was doing it with energy. I was doing it with excitement. And it was something that was really important to me. And think about that, like in context of the school year context of the work that we actually do and maybe think about it maybe at the beginning of the school year maybe beginning of semester but with a class sometimes what we'll do is and I've done this I'm, I can say I'm guilty of this um, we spend uh, that, a really short amount of time with our students at the beginning of the year and we'll maybe spend you know the first hour of a morning kind of getting to know them building some relationships and then what I would do sometimes, just like, hey, okay, here's a syllabus for the year. Let's get going. And that focus, what it would often do is it, it would actually have kids who didn't really know me, didn't really trust me. And then they're awesome the first couple of days, by the way, right? Because they're, 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 they want to make a good impression on you too. But because they didn't necessarily build that relationship, it started getting harder through that time. And so I know that many schools that I've worked with, uh, some of them actually say like, hey, let's spend like the first, you know, few days building relationships with kids. And when you think about that, what happens through that process, some people say, well, look, I, I have so much curriculum. I have so much to go through that it's really kind of hard to give up those days. But what happens is when you build those relationships, when you kind of start slow and you just take your time getting to know people, I'm not talking about doing icebreakers. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of icebreakers, but like just genuinely having conversations, getting connect with kids and really knowing who they are, what happens is that 
everything starts to speed up that you can kind of get things done quicker because there is that trust in place. And I talk about it all the time, Stephen Covey's speed of trust, that whole notion that when we build those relationships, things actually get done faster, but you do kind of have to start slow. And think about this, not only at the professional level of teacher, but administrator as well. Uh, a lot of times uh, what I've seen is uh, at the beginning of uh, a teacher's year or like, you know, when they're new to a school district, there will be all these like amazing, you know, events and welcoming for new teachers and make them feel all warm and welcome and stuff like that. And we spend that day and that's great. But then what happens after that? Right. And then what happens when people are kind of just lost in that process? And I read this article and like I always you know, I don't want to take credit. I, this is years ago. I read this, but I just want you to know this is not my comment. But it actually said that people will remember their organization more by the last three months there than the first three months, right? Because the first three months are kind of a distance memory. And I think that what we'll do is we'll, try, we'll have these quick one-off days. We'll have these things. But then later when staff are there for a significant amount of time, um, you know, do we treat them like, are we mad when they leave? Are they, are we mad when they actually found, you know, a different opportunity that they might find that's better for them professionally, better for their family, or do we treat them the way that we welcome them to our staff? Do we actually do that? Do we actually, maybe to be honest, you treat them better than when we first came because we've built those relationships with them over years. We've connected with them through that process. So I really kind of want you to think about this. I want you to think about, you know, in, in your work, in your professional life, uh, whatever aspect, are you just going super hard at something right at the beginning, eventually to just kind of flame out and move away from it? Or are you actually just kind of getting your feet wet, doing this stuff? And like, I'll give you this example from this podcast. Um, I started this and I just, you know, I do this all the time. I just kind of dip my toes into things and I start playing around. And I don't necessarily invest all my money, all my time and effort and stuff. I just try some things. I see what's happening. Um, this podcast that you're listening to, this started with me taking a $10 mic, plugging it in to my uh, phone, sitting in a basement, going through that process. And I, I wanted to get into it, but I didn't know if I, I'd like it. So I kind of wanted that slow process. I just wanted to see how it's going. And I hope every single year, um, every episode, it's getting better. And I'm, I'm finishing it. I'm actually, every time I sit down to do um, one of these episodes of Mindset Monday, I'm excited about it. I get excited. And the longer I go, the more excited I get about this process. But what I've seen is the opposite. People say, I want to start a podcast. They'll hire a graphic designer. They'll, you know, spend all this money on equipment. They'll do all this crazy stuff. They'll do a couple episodes and they'll just flame out. They're not, not interested. They didn't really like it. So I want you to kind of identify those things that you can kind of dip your toes in and take your time and just kind of breathe. And I want you to think about it professionally and I want you to think about it personally, right? Uh, one of my mantras for exercise is push yourself um, hard every day, but not so hard that you won't go back the next day that you do this. I've seen this a lot of time. People start a new workout program. They get way in over their head at the beginning and then they want nothing to do with it the second day get your feet wet see how it goes you know take that time start slow um but then end strong so hopefully uh you enjoy this episode of mindset monday ease into your week i hope you have a great day a slow day a day you build relationships but as the week goes i hope you build strong have a wonderful day thanks for all you do Take care.